these are um, our ground pegs for our, our ten foot, our, our ten foot six inch wide tunnels. And the problem is that people try to make ten foot six inch wide tunnels or ten foot tunnels for the six inch. And uh, the problem is you end up having to stoop. So we put an extension on ours. You can see it here. Now, for the purposes of um, showing you how to do with a timber rail, and I'm just going to explain what you have to do. Now this is for the 10 foot 6 inch one wide tunnel. This is for our 15 foot 6 inch wide tunnel. There's no extension because you don't need it. Uh, the peg marks ground level. The same here, peg marks ground level. Now, for the new expensive anchors, what we do is uh, we just dig a small hole. We don't go down too far. And we just bang him into place where he should be. And then we get three small rebars like this. And we just put them at an angle like this then. Again now, the self tappers at ground level. And then we just put a small little bit of concrete in here. Now the reason we do this is that people don't like to put a lot of concrete in something in case they have to take it out after. It's going to have to break it up with a, a hammer or whatever. Um, but if you just put a little bit of concrete like this and form an anchor, it only weighs about 10 kilos. You can dig it out later if you ever need to and just throw it in the skip. So I'll just put a bit of concrete in that there now. Now it's important to just make sure that she's level both ways. So it's perfect. In this direction then. She's going this way. We're going to bring this timber straight across the door here. So just offer him up so you know that's going to be like that with the timber that goes this way. And then just mark two little marks here and uh, you'll see why. We're just going to cut down here now one inch maybe and one inch down here. The reason being that this will be flipped over later and our timber will be up here and then we'll be forced them down and when we do at least when you cut from here, you won't have to cut all the way down and damage your saw, you know. It's just a little tip. Just work out where your cut will need to be before you put your whole frame together. I'm just going to show you how to uh, put plastic on using a timber rail. And what we've done here is we've put on um, a 4x1 timber all the way around the tunnel. And uh, we've kept it up off the ground about 4 inches. Now we've connected around here then, as you can see, with um, a self-tapping screw just here to keep it in place. Now later we'll be removing that because what we're going to do is fasten the plastic on and then force that down, that'll help us to tighten it. And then we then we'll put in a, a, another self-tapping screw. Um, now, just for joins and that, galva band works perfectly well. Um, 25 mil wide galva band, 1.5 millimeters thick. It's available in any hardware store. You just just shape it around the, the tubes like this. Now, um, you can see what I've said earlier here. Now that um, just off this up and just cut it. Because when you force this down after, this will be done here, and it'll be very difficult to cut it then. So the the idea is that when it's down there now. When it's all the way down, you only have to cut here really, that's all. Because this piece will be getting cut out, this piece between the door. Now at the doors, um, as you see I, I've carried the timber across like this. And you can see I, I have to cut here now where I'm going to cut this when, it, when it's put down later. But then you still have to put on your batten this pattern. So um, what I've done here is that uh, I've just cut the batten to suit so it's actually probably four inches shorter than what it normally would be. And um, so the next thing we're going to know is we're just going to put on our plastic. We're going to tighten from the top of the door frame to the top of the door frame. And then what we're going to do then is, and it's different from other tunnels in this respect, um, as you can see here, and this tunnel, 
plastic gathers in the corner and uh, that's very good, it's actually very good for us tightening it and it takes a lot of the slack out so, but, but on these because we'll be batting around with timbers it won't be possible to to leave the, the plastic gather at the corner so what we're going to actually do is bring all the plastic around around like this straight across to the door so what or the first thing we'll be doing is from the top of the door frame to the top of the door frame and then we'll be tightening at the sides of the doors we'll be tightening in such a way that we'll be pulling it down here so that we get a tight across the shoulder from the first hoop to the second hoop and the same on the other end from the first hoop to the second hoop and then here we'll be pulling around pulling around the corners here so that she's tight all the way along and then what we'll be doing is we'll be releasing the, the screws here in the corners, these ones and the plastic will all be fastened on, we'll be releasing these and standing and forcing them down to get that final stretch at the end now make sure you catch the polythene on the very inside leaf like this and we're going to pull it both ways now and if it bunches up just above the door there rather than pull it and get a lot of crinkle marks what we're going to do is we're just going to release it is all No, it's, it's a cold day today, it's a January day and uh, so what we're going to do is you can't stretch the polythene unless it's warm because so, otherwise when the sun comes back out it'll go loose so what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a heater inside and just heat it up for a while so when it's warm enough inside that you can walk around in a t-shirt that's the time to stretch it then. Now, on the top of the door we're going to use three battens i just call them equal size so you just go in the centre Put them up near the top. Come down about a foot here. And cut up. To about an inch from there. Come across. Up. Same thing about an inch. You just roll this guy then. Roll them and unroll them a few times till you get it right. Get him so he sits up at the top, the top of the timber here. Looks like. Now, when you're driving the screws, don't drive them all the way through. Just drive them flush because they'll be coming out again. No. The next timber then goes here. Okay. Next timber goes here. Now, because this is sloping down slightly here, not too much or a little bit. We'll have to slope this up slightly when we're twisting it. So we want to come across here and to about here and then come up at a 45 degree angle and then up here. So. Like that now sloping slightly up. I want to get the same amount of tension as here as with this one, so you have to fold until he basically falls into place. Like that. Okay. Just pull him down then. Let me put the third one then here. Same thing. Fast. 45 degree angle up to about an inch from the front. 
slope this guy slightly up and keep rolling until he fits. No, that's perfect. Yeah. No, again, don't drive these all the way in because just drive them flush because you'll still able to see the head because they'll be coming out again. Hard looking. Now we want to stretch the polythene. Basically. Now if you're going making your doors, if you, if you haven't bought the doors and you're making them yourself, basically what you do is um, try not to damage this here. So you just stand here. And force it down. And stretch it. <laughs> but I have doors already made for this so. No, same thing that stand on there. She's warm, so she'll stretch away. Get yeah, a good strain on it. Don't be afraid that you'll rip it because you won't. And look out for little wrinkles like this. Try and take them out of it. You just pull over there and you just pick up as well. Yep, yeah, that's it. Now, oh, same thing, come to the middle again. A tub or an inch from there. It's nice. It's an inch from there. Sometimes you get a knife changing the knife, cracking it. Okay, we'll go on there. We'll take him over again, I get another one. He's like, I don't know what Back on the other side, and what we're going to do is we're going to slowly release one pull, let's go back and release pull. Each time we increase the tension, so that she's pulling harder and harder along the top. By the time we're finished, your fingers should be actually hurting you. You know more than you have to, you, you can't physically pull anymore. So we'll go over the other side now and try to get it. Yeah.
Pause there. We are on the other side again. Now it's already very tight. We're going to try and pull these down to the bottom here. And if we can't get them, that's fine. But we'll just do as much as we can. But we should be able to get them. Savage pressure on this thing. And this time we're increasing the pressure. Now if you think you can get more, release them, roll them up another little bit and repeat the process back down. So you can see now that's very tight. Now if you just want to come in here and look along the top of the tunnel and you see those furrows, the kind of wave effect there, that's a sign that it's very tight. Now your next thing is to actually get them out, you know, from the sides. So that's a sign that this is very tight, so you can hear it there, it's like a drum. Right, look, that's great. There's a lot of pressure on these now, so you have to put another screw between each one, just so that it doesn't come off in a storm or whatever. Um, what I've done is, I pull this such a way that, pull it straight, I see this line is going all the way around, this line is going all the way around the tunnel. And then I pull this in such a way that it's, it's tied between the first and second hoop. So if you look in here now, you can see that the, everything is more or less sitting where it should be sitting. You know, very far corner down there, I'll have to pull that in a second. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a, put a batten on here in the corner now. I'm just going to hold this in place. The first batten you put on is this one here in the corners. Now, you just cut it. Put the, uh, the plastic in like this and in like this and just wrap your batten. And now you want your batten to just fit on the bottom of this timber. Just roll and roll, unroll and keep the right. You don't want too much pressure, just a little bit of pressure. So the important thing is that when you batten him on, that if you look up here, look up here, is that you just pull here gently, don't leave any marks. That this is just pulled so that it doesn't dip in here and you don't get any 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 lines or whatever. Just put a bit of pressure so that this is flat over here like this. And then you batten this here. Now you have to remember we're going to be pushing this down another three or four inches in a minute. So you don't need to get it tight, you just need to get it snug and you've got to get everything fitting so that the polythene is actually sitting in the right place. And we'll just put a few screws in this now. And uh, we'll get it then at the door frame. Now I've put on the four corners down here. Now as I put on each one, I made sure that this was able to pull around here so, so that it's actually flat here, it doesn't come down like this. So and then what I do then is you come by the door pull here like this. So she goes flat along the shoulder up here. And then they are gathering like this. They all are gathering up near the top. And we turn our back again.
now that's enough there now we can pull the rest later we'll repeat this process on each corner now and just we'll do the corner make sure we have a bit of it's tight along the top put on our batten okay now you can see the tunnel is flat along the top along the shoulder it's like and the same on the other side now this is before we've um put on our side battens we only have our car corner battens on at the moment and we have the tops of the door batten but the tunnel is actually shaped properly you know like oh, everything is sitting where it should be sitting now um the next one we, we put a batten center the batten on the one of the central hoops and the same thing give yourself about a foot to wrap the polythene now we don't want to pull this if we pull this we're going to upset the shape of the tunnel up there the, the plastic we want to just get it nice and snug and she just fits into place pulling down there now would be no good so we'll just give ourselves a little Pulling will be done when we release the nuts on the inside later. The screws, the self-tapping screws. If there's just a slight strain on that, no, that's perfect. Now we repeat that at each of the, the central hoops, the cent the cent cent center hoops. Now if you just look up at the top you see that that hasn't if you look up at the top you see that that hasn't pulled it or deformed it in any way it's still all sitting snugly so hopefully in a little while when we release the inside nuts it'll all pull down and keep its shape you know the batten, between the buttons at the posts and the buttons at the corners and between all the buttons you'll have little gaps like this where there's no button so just basically Put one to suit. And it's important that you don't have them any tighter or looser than the one next to them. So just wrap them on, unwrap them, and keep doing that until they're still tight. Just fits snugly into place. No, I'm not putting any pressure on him and he fits in fine. And I'll put a few screws in him. We do the same all the way around. Alright, here's some. Now we're just releasing the, the, the timber frame all the way along the bottom, and we're just going to stand on it then to, to get the last bit of a strain on the plastic. Now, as you can see, the plastic is actually sitting on snugly. Now, it's not over tightened, so it's got a ways to go yet. Like, but it's just sitting where it should be sitting. So, when we push down on it now in a few minutes, it's actually going to maintain its, its shape. Now, um, all right, Anthony, do you want to stand on that there? No, so just force it down as far as we can. Get the south half and screw down. Now we'll put a second one there now in a minute, but we'll just make sure everything, if we're not going to do any more, we'll make sure we're finished. Now we'll repeat this on the four corners. Alright, just kind of look. Alright? Alright, so what we're going to do here now, alright, and you push down there now. Alright, that's it, that's it. I won't get any more than that. 
Now we repeat this with all the internal hoops. Alright, look that's there. Now we we've we've now we've we've forced down the bottom here now and we've put a screw in it. And what's happened is that we've ended up with wrinkles in the top anyway, so rather than just leaves them there, what we're going to do now is we're going to loosen the uh, batten on the bottom. We're going to loosen the inside where the frame is, is held and we're going to re-loosen this again. And what we're going to do then is we're going to pull this again so that these wrinkles come out and then we're going to put a batten back on again and we're going to force it down. And if that doesn't work then we'll do it again. Let's just keep at it and don't be... And, and just try and get it finished, you know, so that it looks good. Now you can see we're after getting nearly all of that out. And uh, the key is that it's not flapping in the wind. If it's flapping in the wind, it'll eventually break on a seam. And these are definitely not flatting, flapping. It's like it's like a drum here now, all the way around. Pull this in here now. We should have it kind of going straight across here. Because we need to pull around the corner out here. You see there. And we just screw these in. And then we get a batten here to finish it. So I'll just put a bit of pressure on this. Now just be careful here now, if we look over here there's a corner and this him. just try and avoid pulling him too much, give it a bit of stuff though. We can get him with this, there's another timber to go on here remember. Repeat that on the, the four corners there now. Just cable in here now, you just wrap your same thing, cut out about a foot, wrap your plastic. Um, careful with these corners, you don't put too much pressure. Like if you pull him that way, he's inclined to stick through. So you can just push him over a bit, give him a little bit of sack there. Just force it down then. Drive your screw in. Same here then. Force him down. Nice and tight. Another couple in here then and repeat that at all the corners. All the gable ends. Right, I need to just gather your plastic around here, put in here, gather your plastic, bring it around the back here, put another batten onto it, and we'll just cut it off here then. And you'll get a nice finish. No. What we're going to do next is the lip of this door here has to come out. Now we've already cut, had it cut earlier, if you remember. So what we need to do before we cut that, we just need to put a few screws in this into the main frame. There's something holding it somewhere after we cut it. Now I'll just get the blade. I'll get the saw there now. And, uh, all this plastic out of my way. I don't think this is a And do the same on each each post. Alright, need a second. A good idea just to finish it off, it's not essential, but just to finish it off nice and neatly, is put another two by one on top of the one that the plastic is wrapped on. If you look along then you get a nice finish. Um see the doors on this one, so just have a look. And there's your colours. Alright, I need a scratch.